Hello, this will be a very simple video um, showing a simple camera representation and transformation. And for this you for this to work you need a camera position and a camera orientation stored as a matrix of four uh, four times four values or as in my example a quaternion optionally. And finally you need an order of multiplication. This is in fact so simple that I went ahead and had to try it out. Well, it took me about a week, but hey, at least it works now. And the end result will be something like this. This is a scene where we look down. In the bottom right corner you can see the kind of camera that I'm employing. Let me put this on top for a second. And I've implemented three kinds of cameras. The first one is a camera relative transformation, where we rotate the object relative to the camera. So if I move up and down, it will rotate the entire world relative to my view angle on it as I look down on the scene. Move up and down and if I move left and right, it will rotate the entire world left and right. So if I put it like so, it will be horizontally spinning. Here it will be rolling about itself. And then the more exciting camera is the uh, wait, text just ran away. It's the first person camera, which is the intuitive camera. We can look around like in ego shooters. And uh, just a moment, I displaced it a little bit. It's horizontal. Let me reload the code. It's not horizontal, like so. And like back to the first person camera. So we can look around walk a little bit, look what's behind this cylinder and on the other side. And the special thing about this camera is I can show you if I walk directly above something and look down, oh this is confusing, and look directly down now and now I lo look left and right, I will spin about my own axis. So just like you're used from uh, first-person games or ego shooters. And the same thing is true if I let me walk through the ground here and look up, look, walk a little bit away. Same thing is true if I look straight up, rotate about myself. And this is actually already a special thing because um, it kind of shows this polar coordinate um, characteristic where if I look down somewhere, and then move horizontally, I will keep looking at this angle downwards. And the opposite of this is, an even more straightforward uh, implementation is the free camera, where transformations take place relative to the camera itself. And this is something my which was my first implementation, which is not um, intuitive. Because if I look down somewhere, and now I spin 90 degrees, then the whole world tilts and I finally look down, uh, look uh, out of it. It's not below me. And that's because if I tilt my head downwards, then you could say the entire world tilts with me. And my, my relative axis is now not perpendicular to the plane uh, below me. So if I move, you can see the tilted axis that I'm currently in from this line. Yeah, this plane is perfectly perpendicular, um, perfectly flat. Uh, and this cylinder is no, it is not at origin, but we treat it as a reference point. So I have some extraneous control here that will help me um, restore this thing. And the special thing about this camera is we can move just wherever we point. And it's always relative to ourselves. And this camera is uh, free for a reason. We can do all kinds of tricks like walk upside down. And unlike our first person view, let me show this real quick. If I look down and now m move left and right, I really look left and right. Uh, let, me, let me jump to the first person camera here. Here yeah, I will spin around about my own axis. So how do we implement these simple things? Well, we need a camera position. And in this case we store it all in this view pole object. Where we store the current orientation as a 
well, we store a current orientation as a um, quaternion, but let me get to it later. S first, we have a camera position where we start off. We are just uh, slightly running away. This, uh, this Y is negligible. We are running away from the origin by Z. Notice this is a positive Z uh, in coordinate space, our fundamental space that OpenGL is going to render. Uh, the minus Z direction is where we look at, where we will render stuff. So our camera position is positive Z, so we run away from this space and then we will look down on it so we can see the cylinder. So if we look at this scene, we are currently looking down the minus Z axis and behind us, um, and behind us is positive Z. And our current position is 8 away from this origin. I don't know currently if 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... Ah yes, so this cylinder is directly at origin because it's exactly 8 stuff uh, feet away so to speak and I al always move by one unit or whatever. So we need this camera position. Now let's look into the implementation of Viewpole itself. This is just some extra data that I needed uh, for a wrong implementation that I tried once. Um, we need the current orientation of the camera itself, which we store as a quaternion. Quaternions are not a big deal. They're intrinsically very hard to understand. But for graphics programming matters, they're just a bidirectional abstraction to transformation matrix. So whenever, uh, wherever we can use a transformation matrix, or uh, to be more precise, a rotation matrix, we can use a quaternion. And this can be easily shown, like... Um, for example, if we make a quaternion, we always provide an axis and an angle of um, rotation about this axis. So let's take a 90 degree turn about the x axis, like so, x. We get this quaternion, or y, what's going on here? We can't really read that. But we have uh, casting functions, which we read this back. And uh, let me round this real quick. And we see here uh, x is intact, y mo collapsed down on the minus c, and z moved up to y. This is clearly a 90 degree turn about the x axis. And the cute thing here is we have casted this to, um, to a matrix of four uh, values. We can easily cast this back into a quaternion, cast quaternion, or how did I call it? cast and bam we get our quaternion back and another cute property is but I'm really digressing here we can easily uh, multiply two quaternions and the result will be the same as if we would take these two quaternions first cast them to matrices then multiply them as matrices and then the result would be the same thing as if we would take the multiplication of two quaternions and cast them into a matrix. So they can be easily moved back and right. Um, quaternions are used because they are they have only benefits. The only uh, bad thing about quaternions is that they can be spooky scary because they are uh, four-dimensional beasts, but uh, essentially they can always be replaced by a rotation matrix. So anyway, we just store with this accessor function code, we just store um, the orientation of the camera and ignore this and that and the second value we really need is the camera position it's just one xyz coordinate in space where our camera resides and in our example let me move back to this it just resides positive c 8.0 and ignore this y value so we just look down on the minus c axis um, which is let me if i just instantiate this view pole then it will take these, uh, this quaternion and this is a identity quaternion or however you like to call it which simply translates to a identity matrix um, mat forecast GLM quaternion easily so it is an identity uh, matrix so if we take this camera position that we have just move to plus c and have it not change its orientation then we will render perfectly the, the scene we had where we look down on this um, cylinder so how do we get these two uh, camera types where we can 
rotate the world about uh, relative to our view direction. This would be this one, rotate it. Re no. This one, we rotate this world relative to our view and the free camera, which points wherever we want, which walks wherever we want to go, even through the ground. So how we do these? Um, the logic of this is inside um, let me see where did I put it. Ah, rotate VP. Right. So he, no, that's so we simply um, do the following thing. We extract the current orientation from the view pool object stored inside this matrix. So Matt simply stores the orientation, the rotation, where do we look at? And then we take the camera position and we yield a translation matrix from this. So we have just two matrices, a matrix that has the rotation where we want to look at and the matrix that stores our position. And note here that when we take the camera position, we want its negated value. We just negate it. The reason for that is a um, simple, because we want to place the camera, the pla camera has a coordinate of 1, 1, 1, for example, and we will negate this value, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, x, y, z, so we will place the camera back into our origin. And if we use this translation matrix for every other point, then every other point is also going to be placed back re relative by the camera movement. So we really look down on the Earth relative to the camera's view, because the camera is now at origin and every other, play, uh, every other point in the world is being translated by the same magnitude. And then we just have to orient the camera somewhere, look at it somewhere. And here uh, we can really implement the two types of camera. So the first one we're gonna look at is the camera relative transformation. Again to not lose the forest for the trees. It's where we move the entire world relative to our own camera. And this is achieved very simply um, by just just the order of multiplication. If we first take the camera position, the negated camera position, and then the matrix. This can be easily imagined as uh, first we run away from the origin and then we rotate our world by the um, orientation of our camera. So you, c so simply like we like can see here, we run away from the origin where we are currently and then we rotate it. S so our origin is, uh, you can imagine, um, directly where the cylinder is. And because we have run away from it, we are now being rotated with the entire world. And it looks like we're looking around this object, but it's really us who is rotating relative to this origin. If we, however, re reverse the order of multiplication, so we here we have the matrix on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side we have the position, then something else takes place. Um, so we have the first person. So first we have, uh, you could imagine, we have first started off inside this um, cylinder and we have moved like to the left. And then, on the second step, we will, um, be offset fr from this cylinder. We will be moved here where we are currently at. So first we look somewhere and then we're being offset. So in this way we can implement a free camera where we can walk away wherever we want. And finally, and I'm kind of happy that this uh, was working out in my head so easily, um, our direction where we move at. So we always want to move relative to where we're looking at. And this can be done really easily. You start off looking down on the scene. And if I'm forward, I'm moving down the Z axis uh, towards minus seven, 7. And if I move away, you can see the position increasing down there. See the 6, 12, 16, 14. Ah, here. So I'm moving down the z-axis, moving up, down. This is easily. So you can see z's being decremented or incremented. And yes, this is really just simply a 
a movement by this simple vector here. So we're moving directly down the minus c axis because uh, in coordinate space the minus c axis is our front direction, so to speak, where we want to render. <coughs> so this is the first absolute direction we want to move down. So how do we get to these other directions? So if I move to the left, I'd change the orientation. So that this is my new front. Well, very simply, we just take this direction and multiply it with our current orientation that is stored in our view pole. And this is what the pole direction does. It just takes um, the current view uh, quaternion, casts this into a matrix. I think this is unnecessary. I'll just code it away. And then it will take the result, which is, yeah, we're just casting it left and right because the direction is a three-dimensional beast, but we want the four-dimensional vector, so we can use our um, multiplication here. So here we just multiply the matrix with the vector. That's all there is to it. We take this current matrix, we take our current orientation of the camera and multiply it with this absolute um, z plus or z minus value. So I have it bound to, I have it uh, call these uh, functions if I pu push the W button or S button so I can move left and right, uh, front and back. And this is like how it works. Very simple. So implementing this camera was kind of a tangential topic that I embarked on. I am actually translating um, this code from Arc Synthesis, where we just uh, currently embark on the topic of lighting with deferred lighting, and we implement this very simple formula. I think it's the very simplest um, lighting model there is of Lambertian reflectance where we act as if the surface is um, is reflecting the light perfectly in every angle and let me see where is the picture the surface not only reflects the light in every angle imaginable it is completely unconscious about surrounding objects so this plane down here and this cylinder are being rendered with the same lighting model and even though here's a cylinder in front of it this plane doesn't care it doesn't have a shadow in it or anything mm. every single vertices that makes up these primitives here is being applied the same simple formula namely take the direction of the light um, marry it with the cosine see what the angle is between the two and then change the um, intensity of light mm. so we have a light uh, source and we can see this on here a little bit better probably. This thing here is dark and this side here is light. And this is the light. So the light is coming from somewhere here. It is an absolute uh, dynamic light source I think where th we imagine that the light is so far away that every single point on the picture it receives the light at the exact same uh, angle also called angle of incidence. Mm. And then there are some points that receive the sun from its backside, so th the angle between the sun, uh, the sun direction, and the normals of the surface are greater than uh, greater than 90 degrees, or I don't know how you call it, more than half pi in radians. And then we simply use the cosine of the two. So if cosine of um, cosine of one, I think of half pi is zero, then the cosine of, uh, this is zero, so everything beyond this point is not going to be rendered. This is just scientific notation or whatever. And if the angle is perfectly at um, pi, uh, at zero, I mean, so if there's no angle between the two, because the normal of the surface is the directly um, parallel to the direction of the light, then we have a zero degree angle and we will render the most intense, um, most powerful light, like it's the case here on this side here. And it gradually decreases as the cylinders normally point different directions until here they are at 90 degree angles and everything beyond that is black. So we could say, well, but cosine gets negative after a while, right? If we just saw, like we just saw um, here, no, 
but angle of uh, 180 degrees, which is a pi, we get negative. Well, we simply clamp those. We, j we simply clamp everything um, that's going beyond 90 degrees angle. And we get this uh, simple lighting taking place. Okay, so I better stop my rambling because my videos always get so long. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed and uh, I'm now convinced that implementing a camera is something just around the corner. I don't know what is happening right here. <laughs> That's a bad note <laughs> of quitting the video, but okay. Let me refresh this. Right. So this was what uh, the tutorial really wanted from me. So if I push the mouse somewhere, it moves relative to it, the entire world. So we can see this lighting taking place on this object here. It moves around. Okay, thank you for watching.